This is the NVIDIA RTX A2000, which has 12 gigabytes of video memory. I mean, where do they fit it all? And today we are going to be putting it through its paces, proving that size does not matter, even when it comes to GPUs and gaming. We'll be playing popular games such as Forza Horizon 5, Gotham Knights, Atomic Heart, Plague Tale, and Call of Duty Warzone. And unlike most modern GPUs, this does not require its own power source. And draws its power from the PCI slot, zapping only 70 watts. The GPU is designed for professional use, so designers, engineers, scientists, and because of its size, it's great for people who require a small PC. Card shares the same GA106 graphic processor as the GeForce RTX 3060, but that is fully unlocked using 3840 shaders, whereas this has only 3328. It has ray tracing, which we will see in some of the titles. You get four mini display port adapters with it. And if you want to use it in a small factor form PC, then you will need to buy a bracket, which you can pick up from eBay from around five pounds or $10. I ran it through 3D Mark and used a Time Spy benchmark, and we got a score of just over 6,000. I also ran a benchmark tool for Inventor, and here's the score. My current PC spec is on screen now, and just to let you know, it is an old system, roughly around 7 years. The first game we'll be playing is Forza Horizon 5, and being a bit of a car enthusiast, this is one of my favourite games. The recommended GPU for this game was the 1070, which has only a 17% difference if you select this GPU on the Tech Power Up website. You can see your selected GPU relative performance against other graphics cards. I'll start on high settings. We are getting over 100 frames per second. GPU memory usage is only using just over 4 gigabytes. Temperature is normal and GPU usage is hitting 98%. Memory usage is just under 15 gigabytes. I am going to go straight to extreme which is the highest graphics setting. It does look a lot better, however the frames per second has taken a hit, dropping down to low 40s and peaking at over 69. GPU utilization is at 99%. Video memory usage has gone up to 7.6 GB and the system memory is at 15.5. This game is not working the CPU hard, with it hitting a max of around 60% usage. Now this card does support Nvidia DLSS. Now with that on that's pushed up the frames per second so it's predominantly sitting above 60 and with all the other resources being around the same level. All in all this GPU is more than enough to play Forza on max settings. Now on to Gotham Knights which was released last year. It's a third person role playing action based game based in Gotham City where you get to play as four characters. The recommended GPU for this game is the RTX 2070 so we are turning VSync off and turning up the FPS limit and turning on DLSS. I'm also turning the sharpness up to 10. Ray tracing will also be on and I'll be turning motion blur off. We are starting the game on low settings and we are getting between 70 and 80 frames per second. GPU usage is less than half. VRAM is at 4.2 gigabytes and the overall system memory is at just over 14 gigabytes. The graphics look okay, but we can notch it up here. So medium, it's not really made a big impact to the resource usage. Temps have gone up and the frames per second is sitting mostly in the 70 range. And dipping down to high 60s. Graphics have improved, textures look more detailed. So let's try high. Frames per second has dropped to low 60s. I mean that could have been because we are indoor. GPU utilization has remained around 40% but VRAM has increased to 5 gigabytes. System memory is at 14.4 gigabytes. Textures and details have improved. Let's notch it up to the highest. Now again GPU usage is not over 50%. FPS is around the 
the same. However, during fight scenes, we are in high 50s and low 60s. Graphic wise, I don't see a noticeable big difference between this and high, but overall, this game is playable at the highest setting. Our next game is Atomic Heart, which was released this year. Set in the future, it's a first person action shooter where humans live in harmony with robots, then things go all judgment day. Like Gotham Knights, the recommended GPU is the RTX 2070. On Atomic Heart, we have turned off V-Sync and capped the FPS to 120. Settings is set to high. Visuals look great and we are getting 120 FPS and a low of 95. We would probably be getting more if it wasn't capped at 120. GPU usage is maxing out at 78% during fight scenes and it's using no more than 4 gigabytes of VRAM. So with those great frames per second, we will not up the graphics to ultra. Now, definitely looks more detailed here. Again, the FPS is around the same, which I'm surprised. I've seen the GPU usage hit 85%. So let's notch it up to Atomic, which is the highest setting. Straight away, the usage is 99%. Frames per second has dropped between 80 and high 90s. Still impressive and so are the visuals. VRAM is now above four gigabytes. All in all, this GPU smokes this game and we can comfortably play at atomic settings, even possibly at 1440p. Unfortunately, I don't have a monitor that supports that resolution. Next on the list is a Plague Tale Requiem. I hope I pronounced that right. This was released last year. For those that haven't played this game, it's a beautiful open world game of action adventure, stealth survival and powers. This game is graphics intensive and you can tell because its minimum required GPU is the RTX 3070. We are setting the game at medium settings. As you can see, the graphics look well. It's already hitting low 44 frames per second, but seems to be averaging around 50 frames per second. GPU usage is hitting 98%. It's only just short of 3 gigabytes of VRAM and just short of 14 gigabytes of total system memory. On high settings, GPU VRAM usage has increased to 4.7 and overall memory is just over 14 gigabytes now. FPS has dropped to the low 40s but I'll admit the visuals are stunning. The grass in this scene here looks very realistic. Does it bother me that the frames per second is low 40s? Not really, there isn't much lag. I'm curious to see Ultra. VRAM usage has increased slightly and FPS has dropped into the mid 30s but reaching a max of around 50. Again the details are great and I haven't noticed much lag. The beach scene here is still on Ultra and and we are reaching 60 frames per second. That sunset or sunrise looks amazing and the ray tracing is definitely coming to use here. Overall, if you want close to 60 frames per second, then medium setting is what you want. But if you want better graphics, then high is playable in my opinion. For the final game, we are playing a bit of Warzone. We have the preset on Ultra and using DLSS on balance. In-game, GPU usage is hitting 98% with a temperature of around 70 degrees. It's using 5 gigabytes of VRAM and we are getting around 80 to 95 frames per second. My mouse settings here are very sensitive so apologies I just can't seem to shoot straight. We are going to change a quality preset to extreme which is the highest. There isn't a lot of impact on the frames per second. It's still above 80 frames per second and reaching over 100. The VRAM has increased and is over 8 gigabytes usage and climbing. Overall, this GPU is handling this game very well. And we could also possibly get over 60 frames on the 1440p resolution. So you see what it can do. Now what does it cost? Well, you can buy this card on eBay for around £385 to £500 used and depending on condition. And in the States, you're looking at between $400 and $500. You can also argue that you can buy a second hand 3070 for that price, which is true, 
but the type of person who will want this GPU will either use it for what it's designed for or if you intend to use it for a small form factor PC for example so you can place it under a TV cabinet or a student in a dorm room over a long period of time you will see some cost savings especially with its peak 70 watt power that's if you intend to game with it you also need to consider that this 3070 has only 8 gigabytes of VRAM and yes the games we tested didn't go near that with the exception of call of duty hitting 10 gigabytes of vram on extreme which might also make this gpu relevant for next year all in all this gpu is definitely worth considering if you would like to see how this gpu performs in starfield then you may want to watch this video here i do intend to throw this gpu into a small form factor pc so if you are interested in watching that please consider subscribing and thank you for watching